So I don't know if people are going to keep trickling in, but I might as well begin. Uh, so this is a session on Maven, which is, uh, how many of you are familiar with and ideally have used Maven? About this okay, uh, so what it is, um, is it is a miasma of pain and sorrow that I'm going to encourage you to use. Uh, specifically, it takes the form of a, a, a Java build descriptor. Like, so um, when you have a Java project, and it can actually be other projects, it's primarily Java, but you can actually use it for quite a few things, front-end development and deploying general resources, you could do wikis with an HTML, whatever you want to do. It's primarily Java. Like that's where it comes from. That's how I use it. Uh, and that's, you know, that's the, that's the main thing. Uh, so what it is, it's a way to describe your project. So you've got a source folder full of here are all your Java files. You have some resources. This is the readme that goes with it. These are the images. These are your HTML pages. And Maven is a tool that lets you specify where those things are, what your options are. Say, this, I need this compiler, and I need this plugin, and these things. And this is, so at its core, it's really just a way of saying, here's how to build the project. Here's how to tell the computer how to build the project. Uh, every IDE you use, like unless you're using like PHP, but if you're using IDE like Designer, Eclipse, other IDEs, they have this kind of thing internally. Some of them use Maven directly. Some of them have their own thing. Uh, Eclipse has its own. It has a .project file, a .class path. Those serve the same purpose as Maven in many ways. So it's just a way to describe, here's what the project is. Here are the files. Here's where they need to go. Maven covers a lot more ground than that, too. Um, it covers your dependencies. So if you're writing an app that says, you know, and it, a lot of the early stuff you'll see if you just find out, if you just search for I want to use Maven like tutorial, it'll be I want to make a Java app and I want to use a library like Google Guava, uh, one of these other ones. And so it's a, it's a way to say I'm using these specific libraries, these specific versions. Uh, and so in a general sense, it's just that. It's just a way to describe your project, just a way to describe the, the contours of it. Um, but where the, the thrust of my presentation is going to come in is that it can get hairy, it can get complicated, it, it can get really good. Um, and But especially coming from a domino direction, we come at it from a, a thicket. We are, we are going through a rough road to get to Maven. Uh, but I believe it is still worth it uh, overall. It's like Bower. It is, it is similar. Yeah, it, so Bower is a very similar thing in some ways for JavaScript. Uh, so if you're... That looks awful. <laughs> 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 yeah, Speaking of free beer, huh? I need to be. I need a more high contrast profile picture. The text looks fine though, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, so if you're not familiar with me, my name is Jesse Gallagher. Uh, I am a primarily X Pages developer. Although as I as I will go into later, I've been doing some other things as well. I blog at uh, Frostilicus, which is a Simpsons reference. If you're with it. Um, that's, you know, so it doesn't mean anything beyond being a Simpsons reference, but that is my blog. I primarily talk about XPages development, Domino stuff, sometimes other, other things, but it's primarily a programmer blog. Uh, I also work at a consulting company called I Know Some Guys, uh, and our, the, the short form of our website is iksg.us. Uh, we do consulting work, we do uh, XPages stuff, we do classic note stuff, we can do potentially other things. Um, Although it's not good as a consultant to say this, I'm kind of snowed under at the moment. Um, but that will not necessarily be the case forever. So right now, if you had work for me to do, I'd probably have to say no. But down the line, I will be more than happy to do work for you uh, when I'm physically able to. So what is me? And this is, I, I did go into this a little already, so I did it slightly out of order. Um, so I covered the first part, what is it? So it's just, it's a way to describe your project. That sounds nice, but why is it so hard? Uh, if you followed along the development of the OpenNTF Domino API, uh, especially if you're in the chat, um, you may have seen uh, Nathan Freeman go through this process of mavenizing it. And um, before he got into Maven, he had uh, long, flowing, Fabio-like hair. And then uh, as soon as he started using Maven, and it's uh, he went nuts, more than usual. And I, at the time, I didn't, I wasn't really familiar with Maven. I didn't know why it was so difficult. I just saw it from the outside, I'm like this is madness. Um, so I'll go, you know, just as a demonstration, I'll show a, a simple Maven descriptor file. It's all this. Uh, so you should probably jot this down uh, because this is the most basic. This is the uh, <laughs> this is the file that Nathan came up with. Uh, so this is why it's difficult in Domino because what you end up with in this file it's called the POM, the Project Object Model, I believe. 
you end up with this file called a POM, and it describes everything about your project. And so coming at it from the domino direction, you need all kinds of crap. Like there's all sorts of stuff to make it work with OSGI, to make it work the way that it's supposed to with, uh, with domino. And this is, it's not a worst case scenario, but it's not far off. Um, this is a particularly complicated introduction. Uh, what a normal POM file looks like is this. Normally, in the best case, say you're saying, I want to create a new Java project and I want to make it Maven, you will have something that looks basically like this. There'll be a little more, if you're, if you're a conscientious developer, there'll be a bit of a unit for testing. Um, I took that out because... <laughs> uh, testing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever, that's for nerds. Um, <laughs> but here, so there are a couple things. It says group ID, artifact ID. And this is really, if you've done OSGI development, your plugin will be named com.mycompany.someplugin. Group ID is com.mycompany, and then artifact ID is some plugin. So it's really just a way of saying, this is the organization that's making it, and then this is the tool, and this is the way you can group things together. You'll have your version, you know, pretty straightforward. It uses snapshot uh, OSGI, if you're familiar with it, uses qualifier. It means the same thing. It just means this is a dev version. When you go into production, it'll be 1.0, 1.1. And then packaging jars is actually optional. I could have taken that out. Um, by default, Maven does a lot of things that are geared towards just a basic Java project. So it knows by default it's going to be a jar. By default, it's going to have a Java compiler. It knows where your source is. You go to there's a source main Java folder. You just put stuff there, and you don't need to do much. If you have this and you have some Java code, and then you just run uh, MVN install, it will go through everything, compile it, install it in your local repository. You're done. So that's why it's okay. Like this, this is why Maven is handy, and then you can get a little more complicated when, if you want to use third-party libraries. If you go for pretty much any Java tutorial, um, like if you say I want to use Guava, and you go there, they'll say here's how you use, use it in Maven, and they'll have a little block of code you plop in there, and then now you have Guava available, and it's great. So where it gets difficult for for us is OSGI. Uh, so OSGI if you're not familiar with it, is it's the framework for writing Java components that Domino uses for XPages, for XPages plugins. Uh, if you are getting into Java via the root of Domino, you may, especially once you get into plugin development, you may see OSGI as a, as a core elemental piece of the Java world. It is not. Uh, it is a specific type of Java development. It has a lot of tooling. It is what Eclipse is based on. You know, IBM is behind it. So there's there's a lot of weight behind it, but it is one of many. And in many ways, it competes with Maven. But um, on its own, it's not too crazy. You'll have uh, so actually, just in general, how many how many of you have done uh, XPages plugin development, like a, just an OSGI plugin? Okay. Um, the the way these take form is that you'll have. A, it'll just be a Java project, and you fill it with Java code. And for X pages, there are specific things that you'll need to do to be able to hook it up and do different things. But it ends up being a jar file, which is a Java archive. Um, so you'll end up with this. Uh, from, for OSGI, there's something called a feature, which is a way of saying this is say, a feature, and it uses this plugin. So it's, you end up with two jar files. And the feature is very small, pointing to this plugin. Then you end up with something called an update site, which is a way to say, I have a bunch of features. And so you'll have your update site pointing to your feature, pointing to your project. So you have this kind of three element cadence that you have with OSGI. Um, it's a little weird to get into to start with, but generally, if you're looking for something for OSGI and you're doing domino development, things are pretty interchangeable. Like if you just want general OSGI tips, many of them apply to domino. And this is ground that's not, um, you know, not fully covered, but pretty well covered among Domino development. Like when, if you search for something that says, I want to start doing an XSP library, you will come across tutorials for here's how you do it in Eclipse, here's how you create your plugin, here's how you create your feature. Um, however, as with pretty much everything to do with Domino, it's a little behind the times, even with the stuff that it fully embraces. Um, and this is, this is a point that will come up with Maven, where the update site I mentioned, all it really is is just a directory of here's, here's the stuff that you want to install on the server or you want to install in Eclipse. There are two ways to do it. There's the old style way and then there's a new cleaner way that's more efficient for data transfer and it, the specifics don't matter, but there's a new way and an old way. Domino uses the old way because it's Domino. Uh, and this leads to trouble. 
when you start dealing with Maven. Um, so I mentioned that OSGI and Maven, they cover a lot of the same ground. And, and what I mean with this is that uh, Maven has a dependency mechanism where you'll say, again, I keep using Guava, but it's lots of things, Apache Commons. You'll say, I want to use this thing. You say, I want to use this artifact ID, group ID, and version. And that way it, and, and so you say, this is, I have a dependency on this. OSGI also has this. Uh, when you're writing a plugin, you can say, I want to depend on com.google.guava version, you know, whatever, uh, up to whatever, you have these capabilities. Um, and so these conflict because they're not the same. Uh, they're similar, uh, they cover the same ground, but then Maven goes off and it has abilities for fetching these dependencies. OSGI has abilities for managing multiple versions at runtime that Maven does not, sort of. And so, uh, the way I picture it is that you've got, you know, Maven here covers all the way down from the bottom up to about the middle. OSGI covers the middle up to the top. And this part in the middle is, is where a lot of the trouble comes in. Tyco is where the trouble comes in. Um, when it comes to Maven development with, with OSGI, Tyco is the tool for making <coughs> Maven work like OSGI works. Um, th and this is what the Domino API currently uses. We may hopefully be able to get rid of it. Um, but this is a tool that kind of cr tries to take these two disparate worlds and make them work together. And the tack it takes is, takes is by telling Maven to shut up and putting OSGI stuff on top of it. And Kind of works. Uh, this it it does a reasonable job of so so I mentioned the dependency mechanism where you can say I want to depend on this in Maven and you can find it and then in OSGI you can say I want to depend on it. That kind of works. You can coax Tyco and it's like an experimental feature into using those Maven dependencies and actually working with that, and it kind of works. Similarly, you can. You can kind of have it act as, like you could do unit tests with it. They kind of work like they would in a real environment. Um, with other Maven settings, you can kind of do the same compiler tweaks so they will be respected. It all kind of works. And this is a recurring theme when you start doing Maven development. Um, especially, especially when you get into Eclipse. So Eclipse, when you're dealing with Maven development, uses a tool called M2E, Maven 2 Eclipse. And this is pretty much how I visualize it. It is a mess of a Rube Goldberg machine because what it is trying to do is, and actually I should step back a bit, because Eclipse, I mentioned, is based on OSGI. Eclipse is where OSGI, I believe, came from. Like it is, it, that is the core of it. And that's why it operates kind of similarly to Domino when you do that kind of development. Um, and but it doesn't quite, like, it has its own semantics on top of it. So like OSGI does not specify how to build a project, Eclipse does. And so while OSGI can be mildly compatible with Maven, then it's like, okay, now it's reaching over here to the Eclipse side. And you end up um, having a, uh, a, a it, so, and then you end up having to say, okay, how can I coax Eclipse to treat things like Maven does, but in a way that will not that will end up doing the same thing, but in a way that's not going to break what Maven expects and doesn't break what Eclipse expects. And <clears throat> this is where the madness comes in. The way that M2E works is that for every element in, in, a, in a Maven project file, which where you can say, I have this plugin and it will do, you know, for example, Tyco I mentioned, will um, it will figure out where the, the classes you need are, where things should end up, what configuration file should it read. It has all this information, and the way M2E set works is it goes and re-implements everything. So it basically, it can hook into the same code depending, but you have to have a specially written M2E connector to have Eclipse do the stuff that Maven does natively, and so now you've got this really tenuous path. If you're doing Domino stuff, you start out with this nice, clean, idealized, I have a Java project that's Maven, <coughs> just, everything's gonna be the defaults, so it's gonna work great. It's like, oh wait, no, I need OSGI. So now I need to add in this Tyco stuff. But now you've got this big ball of configuration that we saw earlier, which is this stuff that's telling Tyco, you should run, you should try to create the same environment. It's like, okay, now you've got this other step. 
now you've got M2E that's saying, oh, I'll just try to look at this and figure everything out. And it is not that successful. Uh, if you get into Maven development, um, you'll find a lot of cases where it'll say this phrase, and this is this phrase, plugin execution not covered by lifecycle configuration. This is seared into my brain in much the same way as object variable not sets or no pointer <laughs> exception. This is one of those. This is what happens when it just basically means, look, I don't know, and you got to tell it Figure to ignore it. Figure it out yourself. Yeah, basically. Like, it, it has a slightly more specific meaning than the other ones, but it's still very much in that vein of like, oh, come on. Like, I'm just trying to like, just do what you need to do. And so you either need to go find an adapter. Sometimes it can find it itself. Sometimes it can't. Or you need to tell it to not try to do that, in which case then you have to, real, then you have to start thinking, OK, if it doesn't do this, is everything else going to work? Is that an important step for getting to everything else? Am I going to have you know a different environment when I'm developing versus when I'm compiling and deploying? And, and it's and it's so it's supposed to be worth it. Like I've been up here this whole time, and I will continue. I've got a lot more ranting to go. Um, <laughs> ranting about how horrible this is. Um, I'm ad hoc ranting. If you're looking at the slide counts. Um, is this supposed to be worth it? Like, well, sort of. Um, so sort of. Well, you see here, this is this is my my X Pages framework. This is basically what an X Pages library generally looks like. I mentioned there are the three projects at the top. There's one extra one because I Mavenized it. In this case, I did the work of Mavenizing it. I used Tyco. I have, I used my hard fought knowledge from the OpenNTF API and elsewhere, and I Mavenized it. And what did I get out of this? Not really anything, because um, I can't really use Maven's dependency mechanism because that doesn't work with Eclipse. Like that is an area where M2E doesn't really work. Um, it will recognize it, but when you're using Tyco, it doesn't work. It's like so, what the heck? So in this case, of uh, I just want to do an XSP library. There are some benefits which uh, I will mention a little bit later, but uh, usually it's like uh, it's a lot of work for not that much benefit when it is useful is something like this. Uh, this is the project tree for the main Darwino repository, which is a project I've been working on. Um, not, I didn't write all of this code. I've been helping with it. Um, but there are dozens and dozens. This is actually not the whole thing. There's a little more to go, plus several other repositories. This is why you use Maven. You don't necessarily use it for Right now, I'm doing domino development. You use it for, I'm going to have larger needs later. I'm going to deal with other things. And this uses all kinds of dependencies on foreign JDBC, JDBC drivers, uh, foreign toolkits, extra libraries. It uses all sorts of stuff. Like if I were to graph out the dependency hierarchy of everything, it would be crazy. But it all works great. Like this whole thing, I just do, I right click at the top and say Maven install. And it, runs through all of this code, it does it, it puts everything where it needs to be, it runs through a bunch of unit tests, uh, and then it installs it, everything's great. So this column on the right is why you would do this to yourself, uh, because this is a place that you may need to go. Um, and and not you're not necessarily going to go there right away, but even in the small cases, like once you're faced with something like this, this is why I appreciate doing it on the small CO, because like now this is just, this is how I do it. And these large things will get into, a, that looks awful, uh, <laughs> and we'll get into a tool chain. And so th this, is a, uh, this is the tool chain that we use with Darwin. Uh, you can see we, we store our code on GitHub, because GitHub's great. Uh, it has a lot of great features. You can store it on other Git servers. You can use um, Atlassian. You can use a local repository. But what this does is I commit to GitHub, say I have made some changes, I commit to GitHub, it tells the one in the middle, that's Jenkins. Jenkins is a tool that will take your projects and then build them, and so it'll run through all the scripts, in this case Maven, and it's particularly adept at Maven. It will run through all of this, and then it will say, okay, take it over to SonarCube. SonarCube is a tool for code analysis. It will take your code and say, all right, how much are your tests covered? How many places do you have code that is unreachable? How many potential no pointer exceptions? How many, is your code too obfuscated? Do you, you know, cleanliness, potential bugs, and it'll run through all of this to give back a report. So now every time we have a commit to the main repository, it's all built, it's sent over to SonarCube, and we get this thing saying, all right, you have, you know, 97% code completeness. Our number is not that high. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, eventually. Uh, 
but it will give us all these metrics. And now we have like, okay, number of you know potential bugs over time going down. And so we have this. And this, you know, this just happens. This is part of this chain. Uh, it goes to Artifactory, which is a uh, is a way to host your Maven artifacts. So when you have these built things, you put them up on your own server. And then now, if you have a project that's using them, which you know we and clients do. Um, they can point here, and this just happens. We have, you know, every time we have a new development build, it goes up there, and so anybody saying, give me the latest development build, they'll have it. We don't have to do anything. I don't have to copy it up. I don't have to FTP anything anywhere. And we can, we don't currently, but we will um, have it go to Tomcat and Bluemix for deployment. There is a Bluemix plugin, there is a Tomcat plugin where you can say, I have built, part of what I've built is a web application. And so at the end, I want to run it on a server. You can have it, you know, put it up on a test server, you can put it up in, you probably shouldn't put it on production unless you're doing a real release. Um, but you can just deploy this stuff. Like these are all things that work together as part of a chain. Like this is, the, so the point of Maven isn't so much when you're there doing, well, it kind of is, but for OSGI, when you're there doing your basic development, it kind of helps, but it's not that big. But once things get complicated, you will be very, very happy you took this time to learn this, to go through the pain, and and go th and and um, learn and, and organize your project in this way so that you can go through these tool chains, so that you can use these things. So, and, and when you as you move outside of the Domino environment to you know, <laughs> the the larger world, effectively, um, everything uses Maven or a Maven compatible type thing. And there's another one called Gradle, uh, which is kind of a, a somewhat shinier, newer hotness. Um, there are other tools that have this, but like if you go to a Maven, if you go to a, a Java project of some sort, they will say, here's how you get to it with Maven, here's how you get to it with Gradle. They will not say, here's how you use it on your Domino server. Uh, you can have, you, basically you have to figure that out. Uh, so, the exhortation part of this is that, with all this, this is why I think it's worth it. Like the, uh, last year, I did a presentation on um, on structured Java development using my brain, and part of the thrust of that is that if you don't currently do Java development, if you currently do SSJS, or even if you do a little Java development, it pays dividends long term to really come like do it in a very structured way, not just the kind of Lotus <coughs> notes. Here's a button, double click on it, add some Lotus script kind of thing. Like that is fine at first, but it pays over time. This is another one of those kinds of topics. Like it pays to, when you, when you take the time to learn these things, when you learn here's how a larger project is structured, here's how even a small project outside of the domino world is structured, then you can start doing things like, oh, I want to try out Bluemix. I want to try running a Java app on Bluemix. I want to try doing, you know, you can use it with front end stuff. Uh, if you want to use Roku or your own servers, like this stuff is there. You will find tutorials for doing this. This is, it's not a, you know, it's not a universal tool for everything Java, but it's pretty close. Um, and this is the kind of thing, like I, I feel like it's very important just as, as developers to know this kind of thing, to go out and experience this sort of, this sort of uh, tool and this sort of way of thinking because Domino developers, we, we can generally be fairly cloistered. Um, we, you know, we, we were all raised on in my case, literally doing Lotus scripts and, um, and and that sort of like notes development and uh, and we all just want to keep doing that and so like that's where server JavaScript came in. IBM gave us this because they said, hey, this is pretty much like what you're used to. You can do ad formulas. You can do basically the same stuff. You can click on buttons and it's like, well, and then it's like that's a trick because that's not how. But I was going to say that's not how the rest of the world does it. That's how VB and PHP do it. Don't. Those are the, do not do that. <laughs> and but what you really want is to is to really think about your tool chain. Really think about your tool chain and your your methods. Like you want to say, am I doing this the right way? Not am I doing this the fastest way? Because the fastest way, when when you know how to do it right, is this. Uh, the, once you know this, this is the fastest way. This is the most effective way. But when you're starting out, the fastest way is just a mess of spaghetti code spewed everywhere, and that is going to get you in trouble. That's going to that's going to bite you. That's going to turn into an entire industry of companies saying, "Here's how we mo modernize your Node applications because they're a mess and nobody knows how to use them." Like that's how we got here, effectively. 
Um, and it's just something as a developer. I mean, you know, while Domino will technically be around forever like COBOL, um, you probably don't all want to be doing Domino forever. Or even if we are doing Domino forever, we don't all want to be doing new X page and just write everything directly on there. Like, we want to move beyond that. We want to do better applications. We want to recycle code. We want to do things in a way that we, we can know. Like, one of the reasons to use Java in the first place is to have extra error checking when you're writing code. It, like even it, even designer can tell you certain things. Like this will might be null at this point. This might be a problem. The more you do these things, the more you can benefit from these. Uh, like the the sonar cube is a great example of like this, these are things that lots of people work on. And the point of this is to take the accumulated knowledge of the Java world and point it at your code and tell you how it might be bad. And it will tell you a lot of things. And that will help you in ways that if you're just using designer and you're making a, an X page and you're putting stuff on a button, nothing's going to tell you it's going to be bad until the client does. Right. Um, you don't want that. Like you don't want to always be in a situation where it's like, ah, it kind of works, and I'll just ship it, and we'll see. You want to be in a, in this mode where everything is cleanly structured because you get the better tools, you get the better view of things, you get a better understanding of what makes up the. You know, Learning the whole process of learning Maven, of learning about how it interacts with OSGI is extremely enlightening. Uh, there, it you know, as painful as it is, it, you just learn quite a bit, and you become a better developer doing these things. Even if you don't spend all of your time, like half my time is still X pages development. I'm doing a, I have a plugin that's not Mavenized for a client because we don't really need it yet. Um, I know how it will become Mavenized, so <laughs> I will I will dog food that one. Um, but these, even if you don't do all this stuff, even if you learn this Maven stuff and then never use it, or you just go to Gradle, or you do Bower, which is a JavaScript equivalent, if you're just doing front end stuff, now you have this extra knowledge. Now you know about this wider world of development tools and, and general practices, um, and so. It's it's worth it. Like it's worth it just personally. It's worth it for the quality of your code. It's worth it for just long term development and just knowing what else is out there. And if you you know if you want to do Bluemix, this will help you along. And IBM will be happy to help you then. It's like that's one more way you can get their assistance. Uh, so it is absolutely worth it. Um, and actually, this was not that. That's a that's about my ranging spiel. Uh, but I feel like. I could go, I, I have another couple of things I can mention, but uh, does anybody have any topics uh, they, they're curious about with this sort of thing? Because this is, this is a very open-ended thing. Like, I did not go through a tutorial, here's how you make a Maven project. Uh, that's better done online, like lynda.com, I believe, has some, has some Maven stuff. Like, there are better sources there. Uh, I will, at some point, for Notes at Nine, uh, do a demonstration <laughs> of here's how you do a plugin. That will be coming, but that would actually be a larger and more arcane topic than is worthy for a presentation, I believe. Um, so I will do that, but I didn't want to just go through. Here's how you add a dependency. Here's how you add like because it is it is you know it's pathological and it's you know it's, it's just something you kind of have to have to be able to copy and paste the code. Um, so does anybody have any questions? Yes. J unit testing. Uh, yeah. Jenkins CI. You been able to get there at all, or is that yes. still voodoo of Cameron Gregor? You have. Yeah. Uh, you just well, said earlier, the kind of kind of excluded it, so I was kind of down hard. Uh, I'm. The, it's actually that's a better kind of than I normally say. Okay. Um, so, like for example, one of the I can't go into too many details about what it, what it is, but it is a Tyco based OSGI plugin, and there is support. Tyco has a specific way of doing JUnit testing. So I have it, so it runs these tests, and the if one of those fails, you can tell Jenkins either fail the whole build, or keep going. Uh, there's a chart on the on the Jenkins screen saying here's the number of tests over time, here's the number of failures. When they start getting failed. Failures, I get an email saying, hey, your build's unstable. Like, it compiled, but it's not really working. Um, by default, if you just go into Maven Clean, which unfortunately we, can, we can't really, um, the, when you create a new Maven project, it comes with JUnit. Like, there's, uh, the, there's uh, I mentioned there's a source main Java folder. There's also source test Java. And it's, the intent is they really, really want you to write JUnit tests. So normal stock Maven is really, really easy to do JUnit tests. Maven with Tyco is okay to do JD unit tests. Like it, it will work, uh, and we do do it, and it, it works nicely. Yes. Can we see either uh, Jenkins uh, or 
some of those sonar cube reports that you're talking about to see what kind of feedback that we get from using this new tool. I that was a mm, did I sign an NDA or not? <laughs> that was that look. Um, <laughs> nobody's hopefully. Uh, sure. <laughs> I could turn the camera off for this. <laughs> oh, I don't have five months. Technical difficulties we signed. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Uh, that's from uh, Portal 2. It's an uh, art inspired by Portal. Oh. Yep. I just want to make sure I log in here so there's nothing yeah. untoward. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's see. Well, here's, here's our main Jenkins screen. This is pretty much what Jenkins looks like. A lot of the time, I colored it blue so it matches the Darwin coloration. Uh, and so here we have uh, develop and master branches for well, we have several branches for uh, various reasons, but we have general develop and master builds. And so here uh, we do quite a few commits. So we have you know, number six fifteen for the demo project. We have number four eighty four. And so what happens is any time we do a commit, it will just pick that up. There's a hook on the GitHub side. You can give it a URL of your Jenkins server. And it will say, hey, new build. And so Jenkins will go fetch it. Uh, I think you can go to one of the. Hey, you see, tests are all, all good. Everything's clean. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Which is obviously well. always the case, and it never <laughs> looks any different from that. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you can see here is, uh, this is the tail end of the this three meg of text. Um, but what, it, what Jenkins does is it, sorry, I was in your way. Um, but what Jenkins does is it just runs Maven as you would locally. It runs through all this stuff, but it knows to look at what's happening. It, oh, is there an error? <coughs> oh, is there a warning? And then it just runs through it. I've, you know, I've set all this stuff up to run here, and you know, when this step succeeds, push out to here. When this step succeeds, push out to there. Hmm. Let me see if I can do a, uh, use the GitHub plugin. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it fetches it, it so GitHub, Posts over to this URL and then it says it has. You know, I think it uses SSH to get to Git. Pulls all that stuff down. Uh, let me take a look at the the sonar to see if there's anything incriminating there before I move it over to the other screen. <laughs> Actually, it's a it's an A grade uh, for this code. Uh, 133,000 lines of code. Again, it's a large project. Uh, this is one of these several repositories we have. Uh, and so this will tell you think 3.8 duplication. Not too bad. Uh, directory tangle index. Uh, don't don't pay attention to that number. It's fine. Uh, what? I'm actually surprised that all those other numbers are zero. Maybe I need to reconfigure. I don't even understand what directory tangle index means. It's just I think it just means there's a lot of directories. <laughs> that's to do with quantum entanglement. That's right. <laughs> I mean, why do you so, and so, it so much that it's meta? <laughs> <laughs> Any change name made in this file this immediately appears on that file. <laughs> yeah. So Sonar here gives us the statistics. Like normally, you know, you're not necessarily going to care that the number of accessors has gone up over time, but that's a number that you can have. Uh, there's a lot more information here. There's you know, pages and pages. So like this is just the way of like now we have metrics about the code. Um, you can you know you don't absolutely have to have Maven specifically, but this is the sort of thing that becomes very very easy. Like I set this up with having no idea how any of this stuff works. I installed SonarCube, and then there's a plugin on Jenkins that says when you're done, give it go give it over to Sonar. Sonar knows all about Maven mod modules, so it can all the reports can be down in the modules and can be organized nicely. And it has knowledge of this because. You know, Maven is such a common way of doing this development that other tools support it. It's a nice thing when the stuff you're doing is supported by other tools out in the world. It's not just, you know, designer. Um, so, yeah, I, um, so this, yeah, it's, it all looks awful. Uh, <laughs> mostly it's just me complaining about the look of the screen, I think. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, this is, this is, Pretty useful. I get a lot of the times. Like early on, I went through. Just there were some that were legitimate. Like, oh, this this would be a null pointer exception in this edge case. Like, 
discount it. Like, this is really, really nice having this. There's another tool called uh, Find Bugs yeah, um, that you can do right in Eclipse. It has, they cover a lot of similar ground. Uh, they're not, this covers some things that Find Bugs doesn't and vice versa. Uh, Find Bugs, incidentally, is a tool that you run in Eclipse. You can right click on your project and say run Find Bugs and it will get a report. So, and there is a version of that for designer. Uh, Christian Gudemann did, uh, did Yeoman's work putting that together. Uh, if you're not currently using that in your in your Java-based sex pages applications, like it can't do server JavaScript, but it can do Java. If you're not currently using it, do it. Uh, go go look for find bugs for Domino Designer uh, and use that. It's all you know. That is that will help you a tremendous tremendous amount. That, that phrase in Google may may crash Google. Hmm? So finding bugs in Domino Designer. Oh, yeah, right. might, might find <laughs> That's right. Crash Google. <laughs> Yeah, I guess there's probably an upper limit on the number of hits. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm letting you out fairly early, but I will be lingering around.